Hello everyone, uh, so my name is Toby Horrorboy and you might know me as Horrorboy Cosplay on TikTok. Uh, I cosplay primarily like Creepypasta, FNAF, like various other horror things. Um, and I get asked how to cosplay questions a lot on there. And the most frequent one that I get is just sort of how to cosplay, how do you cosplay? And that is such a broad question. So because most of my followers follow me because of Creepypasta, I have decided today to make a how to cosplay most creepypastas video, just as sort of a general catch-all. And if there is demand for it, I will happily make other videos, other tutorials. I've been cosplaying for quite a while now, so I do have some things in here and I give them to you in video form if you would like. And to answer the question of like, how do you cosplay a creepypasta? I kind of split up creepypastas into two groups. So there is type A, who's very simple, and type B, who's a little more complicated. Um, so we're only going to be looking at type A today, but I obviously I'm very happy to make another video explaining the further intricacies of some of the other characters' outfits and whatnot. One of the reasons that creepypasta is actually a really good starting point for cosplay stuff, along with like Five Nights at Freddy's, um, is that the creepypasta characters just kind of wear clothes. Most of them, not all of them, most of them are just kind of guys. They're just people and they just kind of wear clothes. Um, a lot of the characters wear hoodies, a lot of them will just have like like a black dress or something like that. So it's you don't have to make anything, you don't have to buy a like custom thing that's like specifically made for this one character or this one series. They all just kind of wear clothes, which means that it is prime real estate for closet cosplays which is awesome because it looks really cool and it's usually really cheap and it's easy. You don't have to learn how to sew or anything. You can just, you might have most of a creepypasta cosplay in your wardrobe already and have just not realized it yet. On top of that, uh, most creepypastas, the sheer majority of them, have the same kind of design elements, uh, which means that if you can do one of them, theoretically, you've then got the skills to be able to do most of them. Uh, the same kind of applies to Homestuck. If you can print a t-shirt and paint yourself grey and make some horns, you can cosplay just about every Homestuck character just right off the bat, which is awesome. But this is about creepypasta, so let's get back to that. The best way to do this is to sort of look at a breakdown of the character. So I'm going to use Jeff, Eyeless Jack, and Puppeteer as examples at first. And those are all three like type A creepypastas, like the easier to cosplay ones, despite Puppeteer not really looking it. So for example, uh, Jeff wears just, he has a white hoodie. He has black dress pants, but like jeans, whatever, it doesn't matter, They're just black pants um, and black hair. And then you need SFX makeup if you want, depending, it really depends how hard you wanna go. You don't have to do all of this, um, but like white skin paint and then SFX for the smile. And that is a whole Jeff cosplay. Um, and Eyeless Jack basically follows the same rules. He doesn't, canonically have anything but like a lot of people draw him with black pants, black hoodie, usually short hair, often brown, not always, do whatever you want, really doesn't matter. Um, and then you need the grey face paint and then just a mask and you can make a mask and once you can make a mask you can make a mask for every creepypasta that has a mask which is really cool, that's good. Uh, Puppeteer again actually follows the same rule, like he looks more complicated because he has more layers and he's got the lights, but he's not actually that much more difficult than cosplaying Eyeless Jack or Jeff. Um, he, once again, wig, hoodie, he's got an overcoat, uh, which you can just find in like a thrift store or maybe you've already got one or maybe a parent or friend or sibling has one, I don't know. Um, I had mine already, um, but, and he's got like a beanie, which you can find pretty easily, you can get online if you have to. Um, and just pants and then the lights you can just there are a bunch of ways to do it i've seen people do like yarn tied on their fingers i've seen ribbon uh, i've personally used el wire um that i've like poked through my gloves <laughs> um which you could just buy in yellow which lights up which is really cool it lights up that's awesome uh most recently i actually used light whips for him which was not like less accurate but i had more fun with it and i thought it looked really cool um, they didn't come like out of my fingers so much as they came like out of my arm, but I liked it better. So that's what I did. And sometimes looking at a character that you want to cosplay and 
seeing all of the different elements of their design can be really intimidating. Like it can seem like there's a lot going on, but none of it is particularly difficult with most of these creepypastas, which is really awesome. Um, they're like pretty easy to cosplay. Like going back to Jeff for a second, if you can get a white hoodie, if you've got one already, if someone you know has got one, that will let you borrow it. Uh, if you can thrift one, even like buy one new. The really cool thing about creepypastas is that when you do have to buy something, you can usually wear it outside of the cosplay. Um, I wear my eyeless jack hoodie all the time because it's a black hoodie and it's comfortable and it's great. So I don't feel like I've, you know, gone out and bought something and I wear it like once or twice a year for conventions, though that's, I have many things that I do that with. Um, but it's good because you can reuse it and then you're not spending, you know, 10, 15, whatever dollars on a hoodie that you're only going to wear sometimes. So you can use those things again. So if you can get a white hoodie for Jeff and if you can get a black wig if possible, um, I'm going to do another whole video on buying wigs. I like to buy them from AliExpress. Um, eBay is also good. Amazon Australia is really bad, so I have never used Amazon for a wig. Um, but maybe you'll have more luck if you don't live in Australia. I'm going to have to do a whole different video on finding wigs because it's kind of a lot. There are a lot of intricacies of it. Um, I like to get my wigs on AliExpress. Shipping usually takes a little while, but I find that they tend to be like really good quality and they're like quite cheap and I don't mind waiting. If you can order your wig in advance enough, then AliExpress can be a really good option. Um, as long as you go with a reputable seller with reviews, but I will do another video on that another time. Um, Amazon, I'm sure, is fine if you don't live in Australia, but unfortunately I live in Australia and Amazon Australia sucks, uh, so we will not be doing that. Uh, but otherwise eBay is good. Uh, if you've got costume shops near you, sometimes they've got slightly like nicer quality wigs that aren't like the really cheap, really cheap ones. Um, that's actually where my Jeff Puppeteer wig is from. Having a black wig like that, it's such like a sort of a staple piece almost, like short, medium length black wig will you'll be able to use it again and again and again for like everything i use mine for jeff the killer i use it for nathan the nobody i use it for puppeteer um and i really minor adventure zone character that i cosplayed sure like it's great it's fantastic um so you're not getting like a super pre-styled one that can only be used for like one specific character like some anime characters might have really specific hair and then you can't really unless you're very creative, find a way to use it for much else. But uh, when it comes to skin paint, a lot of the creepypastas have skin paint, like a lot of them. Uh, I really like the brand Cryolin. Uh, I use their aqua paint mostly, which is sort of a water-based skin paint, uh, though their grease paint is also very good. And I've just gotten the cream stick, which I haven't had a chance to test yet, but maybe I'll do that on here, who knows? They are quite expensive, which is fine because you do kind of get to use it all, like a lot. Um, Ben Nye is also really good, but I'm actually allergic to it, so I can't use that, uh, one. Uh, but otherwise, Snazaroo is a really good, cheaper option. I find that it doesn't apply as well as the Cryolin, um, and it doesn't stay on quite as well as, like, it might be, like, less good quality, but it is still, like, pretty solid, and it's gonna be a lot better than some of the, like, very, very cheap face paint kits that might just kind of immediately crack off your face, so... It's not too bad. I've used it before. I would use it again in a pinch. Snazaru is good, actually. It's not bad. Not my favorite, but it's not bad. And depending on your level of commitment for someone like Jeff, um, you can get liquid latex and you can do the smile. Um, you can actually get pre-bought like prosthetics that you just stick on. I've used those before and they're really good, but they are, again, quite expensive and not particularly reusable, but liquid latex, like a little bit of skill with liquid latex will go a really long way, especially with creepypasta and horror cosplay, because it's kind of like fake skin that you put on your skin. And then you can make it look like you've got big cuts in your face. Hooray. Um, but that's sort of, it's a little bit technical on the makeup skill side of things, like a little bit. Um, it's not horrendously difficult and it might take a couple of tries for you to get used to but most costume shops actually do carry liquid latex you can just get a little bottle of it and have a go with that and then if you've got red um face paint or red eyeshadow or a little bit of fake blood uh you can just put that on there and that's your jeff cosplay and for jeff it's just combining all of those elements together and 
I know that sounds really like long and wordy, but cosplay can be really intimidating to look at if you haven't done it before or if you don't know where to start because putting on skin paint for the first time is pretty intimidating. Um, you might have to look at like tutorials and whatnot, but there are heaps online and I, again, I'm happy to do some, so we'll see. And then to look at another character like Eyeless Jack, he's basically the same cosplay as Jeff, like breakdown wise. Um, it's not difficult to cosplay Eyeless Jack. It is not particularly difficult to cosplay Jeff. Jeff's definitely a bit harder because he's got the prosthetic work here, but it's not too bad. So again, it's just a wig that you can just get from basically anywhere. Um, my my um, Eyeless Jack wig was an eBay wig that I got to cosplay the Riddler many years ago. Uh, and it's just a hoodie from wherever, black pants from wherever. Uh, and then it's basically just the skin paint, which you should be fine with, and a mask. And my mask, I got a um, sort of $2 shop face mask and I put air dry clay on top of it to sort of round it out a little bit. And I made sure it was underneath and everything. And then I just painted it. Um, so you could do that or you could make a mask completely out of card, like cardboard or something, like cardstock. Uh, or you could just paint a $2 shop mask and have that be your eyeless jack mask and i can't see very well without my glasses so um to prevent further vision loss i tend to put my mask like up here so that i can like use my face in videos um when i do cosplay him and so that i can see a little better um because i've got the mesh on the eyes but it's not it's not anything it doesn't help <laughs> And while I've used Jeff Puppeteer and Eyeless Jack as examples, this does also apply to like most other creepypastas. Um, everything that we discussed for Jeff, you can just apply straight away to Nina. Like she has a very similar design, um, different hoodie and you can wear a skirt. It's basically the same thing, uh, which is great. That's just, that's some skills and you can just apply them again. And again, the same thing for Jane. Like she just kind of wears a black dress and she's got some white skin paint. And if you want to do white skin paint, you can, and she just has a wig and a dress and skin paint, and it's it's it. It's it. It's very good. One of the videos that I will be making at some point is how to contour your skin paint, because the human face is not made up of one colour. You've got a bunch of different colours on there, and when you apply skin paint straight to your face, it tends to make it just this flat, like, single colour thing. So I will be doing a video at some point, hopefully soon, um, on how to contour with skin paint, just so that you can still have, like, you know, cheekbones and things like that. Like just the parts of your face that are supposed to have depth can have depth and you have to kind of add it in after the skin paint, but it's it's worth it, it's good. It'll help you look a little bit more 3D, which is fantastic. Another really popular character is like Ben Drowned, for example. Again, he's actually easier than all the others. You don't have to do face paint for him. Um, you can just get elf ears, you can get them online, you could probably get them from your local costume shop. And you can just put those on preferably with spirit gum if they're not the kind that will just stay on on their own um and that's very easy um i know that ben does canonically look like majora's mask link um but you don't have to have a link cosplay to be ben like i haven't cosplayed ben yet but i do have plans to but what i'm going to do is to just get a green shirt um and just have like a close approximation i'm basically going to closet cosplay him even though he does have like a specific like canon design um just because as much as I love Ben Drowned, I don't particularly feel like sourcing or making a uh, Link cosplay because I just can't be bothered, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but if you can find a green shirt, a green little like tunic maybe, uh, and blonde wig and then elf ears, like he's pretty easy and you can get some fake blood and you can put it on your face and you too can be Ben Drowned if you would like. You can, I believe in you. <laughs> Cosplaying can be a really expensive hobby, like it can add up very quickly. So I find that closet cosplays tend to be a lot cheaper because you don't have to order a whole costume online and get it shipped to your house. Um, a lot of the times, because it's a closet cosplay, it'll be things that you already have or it'll be like pretty casual and you can get them pretty easily. Um, I really like going to sort of thrift stores and looking through like the dollar bin or the two dollar bin and just kind of like finding pieces that I can use. And then I just put them somewhere in my wardrobe and then another day I'll be out and I'll find something else that I can use for the same costume and I'll sort of start slowly assembling it out of things. Um, that always works really well. Maybe if, if you've got a wig for one character, you can use it for another character. Um, actually, better example, uh, if you buy a white 
hoodie to cosplay Jeff the Killer, you might be able to think of a few other characters that also wear white hoodies. Uh, off the top of my head, I am thinking about Kate the Chaser, and I am thinking about Lost Silver. They both have white hoodies, so if you buy a white hoodie to cosplay Jeff, or if you source one, you can then do two other creepypastas with like the same shirt. That's awesome. That's really good. And then you can just wear it because it's just a white hoodie. Um, but that's really like, that's great. Um, that is very resourceful, I suppose. And that's like a good way to do things. And that's how I do a lot of my cosplays for TikTok is basically just by using stuff as much as I can and bothering my mom and asking her if she has a green jacket so I can be the Five Nights at Freddy's frog because I love her. And she did have a green jacket and the big part of the reason I could do that cosplay is because um, my mom had a green jacket in her wardrobe. And the other part of it is that Mazarin cosplayers gave me money for the wig. Thank you, Mazarin cosplayers, I love you. There are characters that don't fall into this quite so much and I'm gonna have to do them in a separate video, but characters like that are like Laughing Jack, Laughing Jill, um, Jason the Toymaker, uh, Candy Pop especially. Um, they're just kind of characters that you can cosplay and don't have to be difficult but are significantly more difficult than the others. Like Candy Pop's outfit is fantastic, but the likelihood of you having something like that in your wardrobe already is pretty slim. So I've put him in part, like sort of type two, type B, and they don't have to be difficult. Like you can put as much or as little effort into a creepypasta cosplay or any cosplay as you like. And as long as you're having fun with it, then that's fantastic. Um, but for example, like Laughing Jack has a lot going on in his outfit, so it is a little bit more expensive if you don't already have base pieces to assemble because he's wearing jorts and like striped socks and he's got like bandages everywhere and he's got like a sort of crop top and then these big feathers and like big claws and like he's got a lot going on. He's got like stripy sleeves and it's totally achievable to cosplay him. Like it's very, it's not super difficult or anything, but it's not one of the really easy characters to do. Um, so I'm just, you do have to make stuff for him. You have to make the nose, you have to make the claws, like that sort of thing. You don't have to make the claws. So depending on your level of like how much time or money you're willing to invest into Laughing Jack, he like could be very easy to do, or he could be a bit more difficult if you want to look really close to what the uh, images of him look like. So yeah, that's type two and that'll be coming another time because that'll take a little while for me to get out because there is so many of them. It's so complicated. So as you can see, most creepypastas that you might want to cosplay with few exceptions, you can do relatively easily because they all require the same set of skills of clothes from wherever, wig, uh, mask, some of them, skin paint, some of them, and then prosthetics, a couple of them. Like, so it's not, once you've got a very basic grip on all of these, it's not difficult to cosplay these characters, it's, which is great very good so that's it for today everyone thank you so much for watching uh if you have any suggestions for other videos that you would like to see please feel free to leave a comment and let me know uh and if you've got any cosplays let me know because i really like hearing about stuff like that and i want to know what you guys are planning um and i'm more than happy to help if you need advice for something you feel free to comment and i will do my very best to help yeah thank you so much have a great day everyone thank you for watching